thank you so much for coming to watch my video. If you don't know who I am, I'm Ellie and I just wanted to make these videos to go along with my written blog where I'm writing about um, each national park, kind of what I did when I was there, what hikes I like, and stuff like that. Um, so I wanted to make these to kind of talk more about certain things that maybe I wish I had known when I was there or how to deal with certain environments because each national park is so different. Um, so this first one, I wanted to talk about hiking in the desert. So kind of before I start everything, um, if you were choosing to hike in a desert, which you should know before you go there, um, I would suggest going in winter rather than summer. So if you're going in winter, you can probably completely stop watching this. But if you're like me and you're going in summer, then here are kind of my tips for you. So if you have chosen to go to a desert in the middle of summer, then there are some things you should figure out beforehand. Um, number one, where are you staying? Are you camping? Are you staying at a hotel? All that jazz. Um, Camping in the desert can be kind of weird during summer because it'll be really, really hot during the day, which means right when the sun rises, your tent gets super hot, um, and then nights can tend to be really, really cold. So it's just kind of a weird environment, so I would check the temperatures, check how the weather's going to be, if it's going to be super windy, that'll also suck, um, or you can skip all this and do what I did and just stay in a hotel. Uh, also, make sure to look up where you're hiking. Um, if you just want to drive around and look at overlooks, totally cool, do that. Um, if you want to actually go on a hike, then here are some suggestions. Number one, go before 10 a.m. The sun, apparently between like 10 a.m. and 4 p.m., it's the hottest. So definitely get done with your hike before 10 a.m. Um, make sure you know about your hike. Make sure you know how long it is, make sure you know if there's hills, how much elevation change there is, is there any shade at all, is there any water, all that jazz. And make sure when you get to the park that you talk to the park ranger. And trust me, I know we hate it, sale associates always ask us like, oh do you need any help finding anything? And we're like, no, I don't, I get it, but go talk to the park ranger. When I went to Canyonlands, I really wanted to do this one hike, I was dead set on it, and then I went and talked to them. And he told me that it was kind of boring, actually, and there's not a whole bunch of, like, views. And even though it's, like, the longest hike in the park, that these shorter hikes are way more enjoyable. So I ended up scratching that and doing a completely different plan. So, obviously, hydrate, but really look at me and hydrate. And hydrate some more, and then hydrate again. There are so many times that I see families who have, like, little teeny tiny water bottles on the trail, and they think that's enough. No, 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 no. If you see your water bottle, you should drink from it. And you really shouldn't be drinking anything else besides water, maybe Gatorade if you're trying to like replenish after a hike. Um, I wouldn't suggest getting drunk or drinking or really tipsy, anything. Just don't drink before you go hiking in the desert. It's a bad idea. So obviously the risk factors for hiking in the desert are number one the heat. Um, when we talk about hiking in the desert we're talking about hiking in an environment that's above 90 degrees. Um, number two the sun. The sun. Bad. Sun, heat, bad. And with hiking in the desert there's probably little to no shade and little to no sources of water like lakes, streams, or rivers so the whole environment is really harsh. And what all of this can lead to is what is known as heat exhaustion or heat stroke. Um, heat exhaustion is less severe, whereas heat stroke is very, very severe. It's life-threatening and people die from it pretty commonly. Maybe not commonly, but like a lot in hot environments, which the desert is. Anyway, heat exhaustion and heat stroke are caused by your body heating up too fast. So it's not that you're getting hot, it's that you, your body got hot too fast. Um, some people are more susceptible to it, um, depends on the shape you're in, depends on um, are you used to being in heat because you can actually acclimate to being in heat and you will perform better than someone who is never in heat. Um, but taking into account just because you live in Vegas doesn't mean that you are acclimated if you spend all of your time inside and you work out inside a gym and you're never actually outside in the heat. Keep that in mind. 
So if your body heats up too fast, then you might get heat exhaustion, which means that you might start getting really lightheaded, you might start throwing up, you might get a headache, you might start sweating a lot, um, kind of just feeling really out of it. Uh, if that happens, definitely stop what you're doing. If there is any shade at all, find shade, try and cool yourself down, and I would suggest not continuing the hike. So heat stroke is more severe. Um, heat exhaustion can lead to heat stroke, but you don't necessarily need to go through heat exhaustion to get heat stroke. Um, heat stroke is a life-threatening situation. Um, so if you have service, it is definitely a call to 911. Um, it's definitely something to take seriously. Uh, it looks a little bit, little bit different than heat exhaustion. So if you are a friend or some random stranger on the trail is starting to be really confused and disoriented, they have no idea where they are, who they are, who you are, what is happening, um, and if they actually stop sweating, they won't be sweating at all, it's a really weird thing, um, then they might be going through heat stroke and could die. Uh, kind of people believe that like with heat stroke you like pass out, like you see it in movies, like people get too hot and then pass out. Well, actually, that's really, really uncommon, so don't think, like, oh, I didn't pass out. He's okay. No, no, needs help. Um, so, like I said, it's your body getting hot too fast, so the only way to combat that is to rapidly cool this person down. So, if I'm hiking in the desert, one of the weird things that I bring with me are those ice packs that you squeeze and they break and they get cold. Um, I usually bring two, but honestly, if you're going with friends, I bring like three to four. Can never be too prepared. Um, and what you want to do is break those, try and get the person to shade, have them sit down, get them water. If you have like a rag or something, take off your shirt, soak it with water over their forehead, behind their neck. Um, in places that rapidly cool or like your armpits or your groin, that's where your lymph nodes are. So put like the ice packs there, have all your friends run and get help. Um, it can be a really, really serious situation. Serious. So remember that. Um, some other kind of weird things that I bring with me, I guess are not weird, but sunscreen. Biggie. Actually put it on, don't just bring it. I know we all say, like, I don't get sunburned, but, like, you don't want to get cancer because you were hiking in the desert. Um, also remember to bring snacks. I usually bring trail mix, beef jerky, good snacks and then usually I'll bring like a little little thing of Gatorade so if I'm doing a down and back hike then I'll drink it before walking back get those electrolytes back going back going get getting those electrolytes back in you um so yeah those are kind of my random tips to help you hike in the desert or camp or go um I definitely suggest going during winter or summer either one I feel like I'm a lizard, so I love going during summer, but definitely gets hot, way hotter than you think. Definitely go prepared, know what you're getting yourself into, and have a lot of fun. Feel free to message me, comment, anything if you have any questions or any suggestions. Bye-bye.